Hi, everybody. My name is Grace. I'm graduating this week from the University of New Hampshire with my bachelor's degree in nutrition. And I'm continuing there in the fall um, to complete my master's degree in nutrition sciences, which is really exciting. And I've been helping UVAC out a lot and creating more nutrition content um, for the Aquatic Center that will increase as we open up more. So I want to talk today about sugar. And it's a really big topic right now, so I want to um, kind of give a little background and give some tips as well. So when talking about sugar, it's first, it's really important to understand that by definition, all carbohydrates are sugar. Um, so all like the veg, like any vegetables with made of carbohydrates, sh um, cookies, um, bread, like that all has sugar in it. Um, but there are different types of sugar, which I'll get into in a little bit. So like I mentioned, there are several kinds of sugar, which we can divide into simple sugars and complex sugars. So simple sugars, they're structured simply, and um, those are like glucose, fructose, and galactose. So these sugars will get mixed and matched to form more complex sugars, such as sucrose or table sugar, um, it's a more common name, and then more complex, such as like starch and fiber. And those are all, once you break those all down, they all break down into those simple sugars, glucose, fructose, and galactose. But that I won't get into all that science today. Um, so typically, simple sugars will raise your blood sugar faster, and give, and that gives rise to the term like a sugar high and why you may crash after. And more complex sugars are more gradual in their effect on your body. For example, having nothing but like a cup of coffee with table sugar or su sucrose in it will raise your blood sugar quickly because there's nothing to slow it down. But pairing it with oatmeal, for example, which um, has a lot of starch and fiber, will sl slow that sugar's release into your bloodstream due to their longer digestion times. And that can be really helpful. So as I said earlier, all carbohydrates are made of sugar, so sugars in everything, even fruits and vegetables. The sugars found naturally in these foods are considered natural sugars, obviously, while the sugars found in cookies or the sugar you put in your coffee are added sugars and, should, um, and these should be limited. So the simple way to think about it, like added sugars, you just add, um, you are physically adding it to your food, um, to whatever you are eating. Um, oh, obviously there's exceptions like maple syrup is tend in like agave nectar and those kinds of alternative sweeteners are tend to be thought of as natural sugars as well. Um, so you may or may um, not have seen a new food label is coming out or has is starting to be phased into packaged foods in the coming months and years. So every company is going to have to be, um, convert to this new food label. And so this label differentiates many different things, which hopefully in the coming weeks I'll talk about a little bit more, but there, one aspect of it is they differentiate how many grams of added sugars are in the product and the percent daily value they are. So now you can see how much sugar is in a product in total, and then in addition, how much added sugar is in that product that the company has added in. And so that book is really helpful for cutting back on your sugar intake. So while everyone has different needs, the USDA does put out um, national recommendations for added sugar as well as other nutrients. For sugar, it's nine teaspoons per day for men and six teaspoons a day for women. So if you think about like how much sugar you put in your morning coffee, kind of um, this is a good like standard to kind of be, figure out how much your sugar intake compares. Um, and it's in teaspoons, so it's pretty easy to convert. So I want to talk for a few minutes about why we eat sugar, why our body needs it, and the keto diet and other similar low-carb diets that are popular in the media. If you don't know, the keto diet, um, like others, like the Atkins, are low-carbohydrate. Um, and like high protein, high fat. So you may know someone who's tried it or you may have yourself and pe some people are seeing like really great results um, in their weight loss or wellness journeys. And that's super awesome. And if it works for you, I encourage you to go for it. And even if you just wanna try it out, if you're kind of in a rut. However, I will say that our bodies need carbohydrates for energy. They're the main and most prefer preferred form for energy. And after consumption, these carbohydrates are broken down to their simplest form, which is glucose, like a, 
like I mentioned earlier, glucose is one of those really simple sugars um, that we eat. And that's this glucose is con then converted to energy and sent into the cells. So the body can use other nutrients, but it really doesn't prefer it. Um, and like, I, so you do need carbs. And like I said, keto may work for some people, including yourself. But what I tell everyone when they ask me about diets, um, I want you to ask yourself this. For example, if you're on the keto diet, do you see yourself not eating carbohydrates ever again for the rest of your life? The keto successful diet um, is sustainable eating patterns that support a healthy lifestyle long term. I encourage you to follow what works for you and what makes you feel good, but just keep that in mind. And you really want to find something where you still enjoy food because um, at the end of the day, you do want to have um, a good time and enjoy what you're doing. So I just threw a lot of information at you. And again, feel free to ask questions at any point. But I want to let, talk about how we can curb our sugar intake um, because at the end of the day, that's kind of um, the goal. I, like I said, carbohydrates are very essential as um, sugars are very essential, but we don't want to overdo it to bring back to the USDA recommendations um, of nine teaspoons for men and six teaspoons for women. And there's ten, there's many, many blogs written about this since and I'm not gonna list them all. Um, but some tips that I usually give to people, like when you're craving something sweet, have a um, piece of fruit or some berries rather than a cookie or ice cream. Oh, hi Carrie, just saw in the comments there. Um, so sometimes when I like, I'm a, I have a huge sweet tooth. So sometimes when I just really want that cookie that I have, I know where it is on my counter. I will grab a, like some berries um, or an apple from my fridge and just snack on that and then kind of see where I'm at. Or maybe I'll just cut. Um, and that kind of brings me to my next point of like cutting my portion sizes. Um, I, I'm a huge advocate for everything in moderation. So whether I will, if I want that cake, I will eat, I will eat cake, um, but just keep it, cutting your portion size, so like half versus a whole candy bar. Um, maybe even switch to one or like one to two squares of chocolate as opposed to the whole chocolate bar, half a smaller piece of cake versus a larger piece of cake. Um, and yeah, Susan brings up a really good point. Even those with diabetes do need carbs. There's this misconception I found studying nutrition when people find out I study nutrition, they're like, oh, like people with diabetes, like they can't eat any carbs. I'm like, that is so false. You need <laughs> carbohydrates to survive. So good point, um, Susan. And then another tip I have and I use a lot is make your own food. Often with... Uh, Prepackaged, like I use the example of granola bars a lot. I was teaching a nutrition education group a couple, like a month ago, and they, their minds were blown when I showed them how much sugar is in like a granola bar at the store. So, but if you, and making your own granola bars is super easy. It's pretty much like the ones I've made, it's like peanut butter and oats and then like a little bit of a sweetener. So, though, in that way, you know exactly how much sugar is being put into your food. Same with baked goods, any other snacks. You can really monitor how much you're eating. And there's really recipes out there for every, that support every kind of diet or lifestyle, um, regardless. Um, and they're often very healthy. Um, one of the biggest things that um, um, I find in America we do a lot of is drink soda. So switch drinking soda, if you've ever looked at a nutrition label for soda, there's so much sugar in it, which I think we all know from our dentists. Um, so if you drink soda, try to switch to like a diet soda or maybe ju fruit juice with seltzer and um, instead with moder in moderation um, just to lower your f f um, sugar intake. Because often the, like a can of Coke has, I think, like 40 to 50 grams of sugar. And that um, is definitely over the six to nine teaspoons of sugar that you need a day. So um, try that. Or even if you're drinking multiple sodas a day, just cut down to one or two versus three or four. Um, just make little changes is really the key in that. And I'd be happy to talk more about um, your personal goals regarding those kinds of more drastic switches. And then the last kind of tip I have is check nutrition labels. Um, 
I mentioned earlier, the USDA made the nutrition labels much easier now to understand. There's more definitions on there. You can see more of how much you're eating and they're more accurate to represent the current research. So just check those nutrition labels. If you see that it had a product has like 60% of how the nutrient, um, the sugar that you are consuming in a day, you should be consuming a day, maybe don't have the whole serving or choose a different product. And just awareness is really the key to under, um, to helping curb your sugar intake and or um, find what's good for you. And not just sugar for anything, um, really use the nutrition labels are your friends. And I hope to talk about that more in the next couple of weeks because it's really the first tool in the, um, that you can use for um, helping improve your diet and health. But I, at the end of the day, I've given everything in moderation. Like I gave you these tips, but really just take them with a grain of salt, find what works for you. Don't hesitate to do something um, that I didn't say or that other people haven't recommended or you want to try a fat, one of the more fad diets, go for it. If you find it works for you, that's awesome. Um, just do what makes you feel good at the end of the day. So that's all the kind of information I have. Feel free to comment your questions um, or anything else. Or if you can, if you think of one later, you I can, um, you can find my contact info on the UVAX website or shoot us a message. Um, I was really great to talk to you all today about this and that's all I have. Thank you. I'll hang out for a few more minutes if anyone has any other questions. Oh, got a question. Should I put raisin? Um, I'm assuming it's or cranberry in my granola bars. Yes, um, they're a great form of sweetness, and often I think raisins more than craisins. They have actually have um, no added sugars, which is even better. Craisins is a sour fruit. They um, often put sugar in craisins, but yeah, anything you want to put in there. I kind of I've gotten to the point where I just like put a, anything that's in my kitchen. So I'll put raisins. Um, I do like the taste of craisins better because they're sweeter, but um, yeah, craisins will work. Um, I usually do like some kind of fruit like that or dried fruit, um, peanut butter, oats, and sometimes and like honey or uh, I find agave nectar. It's really those like liquid sweeteners that work really better well to hold everything together. But definitely um, if there anything you want, you can put nuts in there. It's really you can even get some ideas by looking at popular brands um, and what they put in. Um, for ingredient ideas, but they're really easy to make and there's so many recipes out there, which is super awesome. All right. Thanks, Carrie, for that question. If there are no other questions, um, it's not looking like there are. I am going to get going, but please email me if you have any questions, um, message me on Facebook. I'm happy to answer all of your nutrition and health questions. Thanks, everybody. Bye.